Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to day 12 of Slime Development. So, welcome. All right, so last time we had created the first five levels of level uh, world three, I guess, what I should say, and they were fun. We created a, a lovely little, let's switch to the whole screen monitor, created a lovely little uh, ice level. We created mm, kind of like a, a jail, we used the, the positive blocks there, that was lovely. We, uh, we then created a kind of industrial conveyor belt level where the player has to switch between two different pressure plates in order to um, get to the final one and open up all these gates. We then made a level with inverse blocks where we had to go backwards, essentially, through the level um, while moving the blocks onto the pressure plates that would open up all of these gates down here. And then for the last level, what we had done is made a kind of split level where the player uh, is controlling two slimes, one here and one that spawns in when the player starts. Then they uh, go through the level and do various things. And that's a little bit of a recap. We also changed some code with the ice. Ooh. Excuse me. Ah. Like I just woke up either. I woke up like an hour ago. Anyway. We uh, changed some coding with the ice to make it work a little bit better. Because if we didn't, we wouldn't be able to stop and all that good stuff properly. But we just had to add a bunch of code to that. And now it is going fine. So, today... We're going to be doing the next five levels, at least I hope, um, and we'll see what we can do. However, we're not flying blind this time, boys. At least, not completely. So after the last uh, stream ended, as I was getting things closed and downloading the VOD so I could upload it to YouTube, I ran into a question. And it was, why don't I just stare at the prefabs for a while and think of various combinations or things I can do for levels? And so I brought up a stream to watch and listen to. And well, I guess I didn't watch it since I was staring at the prefabs. But I stared at the prefabs for probably 15 or so minutes. And I was like, okay, what if I do this? Well, that wouldn't work. What if I do this? thinking about all these different combinations, and I came up with basically 11 new ideas that we can use to make levels. So we have all of these lovely things here, um, and then we have a new block that I had mentioned yesterday. Hmm, I don't know. I need to quit yawning. But that's the plan. So we have plenty of blocks to use for, um, for various things, and I think we can jump right into it. So, the first one we're going to use is the one at the bottom, uh, just so I don't have to renumber things if we do not have all of them happen right. So, the final one that we had was push normal blocks into inverse blocks to send both blocks down a T section uh, intersection with conveyor belts. So, the normal block goes one direction and the inverse block goes the other direction. So what I mean by that is we had found out previously that if we get a normal block and we get an inverse block, we can push them together. I'm just going to move this down to here. I'm going to move the spawn point up here like usual. All right. However, the thing about these is if we get a conveyor belt and say it's going up, for example, and we switch this to go what 90. If we were to hit play, what will happen is we come down here, push this in. The inverse block will go down there, while that one will go up there. So essentially what we're doing is making it so both blocks go to different directions while being able to use the inverse block that previously we could not. Because as you know, the inverse block 
If we try to push it, we pull it instead. However, because of what you think would happen with the inverse block when you push another block into it, instead of the direction switching, it actually lets you push the inverse block, right? Sort of roundabout logic. Think about it. Anyway, so that's kind of the plan. So what we want to do is make something like that. So I think we can go like here-ish. And we'll just copy this up to here, up to here, up to here. Maybe put that one like this, I guess. Put that one to zero. And then have this one go to the right. Actually, the one behind that also needs to go to the right because that's how conveyor belts work. Okay. And now if we grab the first conveyor belt again, bring it down, down, we can then I might actually just make this go down further than I originally thought. Um, let me grab all of these. Then we can kind of use this area for it, and then we can have more room at the top. Right, okay. So with this conveyor belt, we want to rotate it by negative, not negative 90. We want to do 180, my bad. 1, 180, there we go. And this one will then be going to the left, which means it will send the inverse blocks to the right. Like this. And then we can go ahead and put a pressure plate here and a pressure plate here. Both of these are going to be set to do one object, trigger once, and then we're going to move the block to this just to do it neatly, I guess. Anyway, that's what we're going to do here. Um... And since we're going to have them set to trigger once, we should grab them and set their force to be, like, four. Just so that the uh, player can't, uh, you know, mess with it by going in there and triggering them once and then walking away, you know? Wrong tile map there. There we go. Okay. We're just going to make a real quick... Actually, I could have just went boop. And that one. We're going to make a real quick... Uh, ending for this little area. Like that. And then... We can go... That... And we want to do probably that, and then like that. Then we need to connect that here, so one moment. I think that is fine. And also, should we do it like that? I guess we can put like the exit over here. Like that. Use some, uh, some space. And yeah, like that. Okay. Let's move the end point over to there. There we go. That's it done. All right. So that's basically the, the puzzle that we were going to use. Um, for this thing, at least one of them that we're going to be using. So, the plan is to move these two blocks down here on the same level so you can push them in. The inverse block will go down, trigger that pressure plate. The other one will go up, trigger that pressure plate. Easy peasy. You just got to think about it. So, what are we going to do for the rest of the level? Well, the player's going to spawn up here, and what we will need to do 
is probably create uh, some sort of gate here that separates this level from this side of the level. Um, that way we actually have something that these pressure plates are going to do. So, what might... Hmm. What might work is if we just grab a gate, and put it here, and then, of course, want to go to assets, open this up, copy the gate over there to change the color of it. And so this gate will be the first pressure plates, once it is the harder one to get. Right? So regardless of what happens here, we're going to have to trigger this pressure plate with the inverse block, which is sort of a new kind of thing to have happen, right? At least for the player, unless they tested it out in a previous level, but that's whatever. Um, so, I pressure close to do that gate. And then, where do we want the other gate? Well, we'll figure that out once we are done setting stuff up. So, before we use these two blocks here, we probably want to have another area where the player is forced to push these blocks so they can see what happens, right? So, what we can do is sort of seal off the player up here. Um, let's do something like this. The player will spawn up here. Actually, I'm going to move the player spawn so it's not in the corner, but it's instead up here. And if I hit play, I should. I just want to make sure it spawns in the right location. It does. Okay. Cool. So. From this, what we should do is I guess I can just move these blocks quite easily up to here. And then... Does the depositor take inverse blocks? I, I forgot. It should, now that I think about it. So it should pitfalls since we're doing that. So let's see um, if game object is... That. Yeah, we, need a, we want to add a... Let's add a case for inverse blocks. Why not? I think we just didn't before because it was like not gonna happen. So why would we do that? But since we can, we might as well, right? Okay. Now we have an inverse block case here that works fine. Don't have to do anything else. We can just move that to the side. Okay. So. I don't want the player to just move them directly into one, because that would kind of give the whole thing away, I think. So what we should do is have a thing here that's along the same path as those two. The player can push them into, drop the spawn point here. Okay. And then we will want suppose we can just go... Why did that change there? Hmm. We can do this. Boop, boop. There we go. Alright, so that is going to kind of signify that I have to push that over there. Then we have this thing here. And I guess we can do a gate on the other side. So if we just change to this and then this, we can then take this gate copy, paste, move it up to here, and then link that gate with the second pressure plate. Boop, boop, there we go. Excellent. So the goal is to push those two blocks into these into this depositor, and then with the other one, and just put it down there. Now, the interesting thing is going to be that player might not try to go directly across here and deposit them into that. They might think, oh, it's an inverse block. Um, I can pull it, so they're going to go over here and pull the block somewhere for some reason, right? But that's not what they're supposed to do. We need to kind of leave this little space open. Uh, but we could add some, like, extra stuff here. Hmm. What was the first thing we could do? is add a sort of 
thing like this, and this can house this inverse block. Didn't mean to move that one over that far. That'll house the inverse block so you can pull it out. So it's kind of telling you that this needs to go down. As for this one, this movable block, we can throw it over here. And we can... I think we can put it behind a gate, perhaps. If we get a gate, put it down here. We can just very easily do that and that and that and that. That, there we go. So what we'll do is we will put a another pressure plate like here and then this one is going to do one object we're not going to track trigger once because we want the uh block to come down here and go on top of it and for the player to be able to trigger it as well to see what it does so here's the goal for this level you push these blocks out into that hole, you drag this one down to here, and you drag it over to here, so that one triggers. So you can push this block out, and then you can move it downwards to here, and you can take the inverse block and drag it down as well over to here somewhere, so they're both lined up. You can push the movable block into there, triggering both of those and opening up this gate. That is what this level will do in, in the first part. Now the second part. What do we want to do here? Well, we have been making it a point to push the blocks with um, other stuff, right? So, I think we should continue that trend. And what if we... If we add another pressure plate here, and we take hmm. take this and we'll go down with it, so negative 90. And this one's going to go down. Other conveyor belts have all things in them, right? Okay, I want to make sure I didn't forget one. I'm just going to copy these. I have another inverse sort of operation here. And then I think... I'll put a patch of ice. And this one, we're just going to mark it as end because it's only going to be one patch of ice, right? Maybe I'll lower this by one. Let's get rid of this one. This conveyor belt. If I can select it, there we go. Okay, so basically we just want the ice to trigger once, and what we want to do is grab the wall, we're going to do this kind of number to it, um, This block there, and then this there. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we have another like inverse uh, block necessary to go into there, and we want to take this and go here with it. Like 
think. No. I want to grab this guy and just go like this. Okay. Yeah? No. I'll do that one lower. That. Okay. So over here, we're going to have an, an inverse block and a regular block. Because we need to knock the inverse block onto this. Like over here. No, so I'm going to have to do this. Then. If that is the plan. I need to get the inverse block down here. Hmm. Let's put on the inverse block. So we need to get a another block here. So this block has to be freed up because so we have to get the inverse block here. Let's remove that one as well. We can put this one here. We can do that and that. Then that and that. Then that. That. Make that level like that. Then we can get a horizontal gate, the first one of this level, which means we're going to have to go into the Assets menu and change the right of it. There we go. Back to the prefabs. Okay, so now we can drag down the inverse block down to here. And we can drag the, or push the normal block over to here. Push the inverse block so it goes across the ice over to here. Lovely stuff. So we're going to put this one here, I think, and this one here. So push the normal block first down to here, pull the inverse block, pull the inverse block, push the inverse block down to there. But you want to keep the normal block because you're going to have to get it across here. So I'm going to also add a, a block void right here, I think. I want the player to have to move the in, or not the inverse block, the uh, normal block and have a slide across the ice. We need the, in, the other block for this area. So, with that, all these gates should be open. I just need to set this pressure plate here. You do one object, trigger once, and then this gate goes to you. Okay. So, in this final little room, I think what we will want to do, so you push that block, it slides across, you slide across, and you push the block, and then it would go here. I guess we can just do a depositor that requires two blocks, and then spawn point. And we can put another inverse block like here. The goal for this little room is you need to get this block down to here so you can push the inverse block into there with that block. And that's going to be this map. So let's go ahead and assign our things to it. So first of all, we want to grab the um, gates. We'll go with that first. Make sure to lock it so I can select multiple things at once. And so here are the gates. We then have the pressure plates. Our few up here. Uh, we then need the depositors. There are two. Uh, mobile locks don't matter. Cages don't matter. Attack towers don't matter. Pitfall portals, nope. One thing left are the movable blocks, which is going to be the one, two, three, four four inverse blocks, so bang, and then we're going to need one, two, three of the movable blocks, so one, two, three, for a total of seven, which means we need to add seven spawn points for the blocks. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'll go over here. That was important for the order. We need to make sure that these go to the correct points or else the blocks will go in the wrong location when they spawn. So the first ones we got to set are the inverse blocks. And the last three are going to be the normal block. There we go. All right. With that, everything has been set up. We just need to do one final thing, which is adding the text dialog, whatever I'll call it. But first, let's set a prefab for this. Just delete that one. And then in here, we're going to copy over there. Save. What did the last dialog we said here look like? Double experiment, let's see how you work together. All right, so. The slime friend is gone now. We're once again alone. But don't worry, we still have more experiments to have more experiments to solve. As a consolation, if you finish the next, let's see, so it's six, seven, eight, nine, next four. If you finish the next four experiments, I'll release you. How does that sound? We'll do that. Okay. Perfect. That's what it's gonna be. God, I can't talk today. That's gonna be our level six, or 26, I should say, right there. Done. Okay. I think it's going to go really smooth now that we actually have like a plan for stuff. We don't have to like sit there doe-eyed and be like, uh... Okay, so next. 14 says, pushing normal blocks into destroyer blocks in order to progress, which is very vague for a, a level. Um... <laughs> So do I want to use that one here? Because if we, we push normal blocks into destroyer blocks, it means we're going to be pushing the normal movable blocks and just have to go into destroyer Because normally you move the destroyer blocks into other blocks, which you could use the destroyer block kind of thing. Um, but how would that help us? Unless I, like, just make a T-intersection of walls to make you destroy a destroyer block. Because otherwise, if you didn't, you wouldn't be able to get through it, I, I guess? So if we, if we made a T-intersection somewhere, um, we basically want to do, like, this, that, and then this, put the destroyer block here, and then the player could continue to move through it and stuff. Ooh, that's, that's an idea. Hold on. Okay, I have an idea. I think I need to open up the pressure plate script for a second, though, um, just to sort of see something, but that's fine. So anyway, I'm going to open this up, that up right there. Um, actually, no, I don't want to do that. 
He uses that one. This one can go with that. Me? Maybe? No, how would I... How would I do this? Maybe make it a... Instead of a... Maybe I make it a cross intersection instead. This? Or something? We'll we'll come back to this point. But uh, the idea of this one, we open up the pressure plate script. What happens when we spawn destroyer blocks? That's just a collision. We want to know what happens if we spawn one. Um, there are ones, that's a movable block, inverse block. So yeah, for the destroyer block, we actually do spawn a destroyer block then just destroys it because we were like, we're not gonna have to worry about um, it causing issues. But I actually just want to spawn one now. I don't want to have it cause issues. So let's just copy this. Paste it here. Active Destroyer, Active Destroyer, and Active Destroyer. Over here we change this to Destroyer Block. Okay, so with this code it, it will allow us to spawn in a Destroyer Block only when we um, progress, I suppose. So, with that in mind, basically I want to take a pressure plate here, and here, and here, and here, and all of these are going to spawn in a destroyer block, one object, and we're going to change all of these block spawns to be right in the middle. Regardless of which pressure plate you hit, it'll spawn a destroyer block in the middle of the area. Now, the problem is, since the, since the destroyer blocks can destroy pressure plates, if we do this, the player can just walk across and destroy pressure plate, right? However, we don't want them to do that. We want them to have to consider what they're doing with the destroyer block, right? Um, hmm. Oh, I know what I can do. Rather than having them be immediately next to the destroyer block, I could, first of all, let's redo this so I can move them better. Um, if we do one space away from each, we can put a block void here, here, and here which will prevent us from um, doing anything with the destroyer block, right? Ah, but that's not going to work either, because I want a block to move through here. Because I want them to essentially push a movable block into here to destroy the destroyer block. I 
I guess I could remove from one path the thing like that. And then over here, I can destroy that pressure plate. And the rest of them, I can just have a item spawn here. I guess in this case, would I even need to have the pressure plate on the left? Because the reason for this is we're going to need the player to have a block go through here. However... Oh no, that's perfect. Okay, never mind. Even even better. I, I got this. Okay, so... First of all, let's just end that line there. We can do this, and... Damn nats. Okay. We can do this, and we can remove this. So the player will go across here, come down through here, up through here will be sort of the plan um, that they'll do. So let's remove this piece. We're going to do that. And then we can actually remove the block voids, because they won't matter. And this other pressure plate up at the top, we won't need. So we will have to push a block through these in order to get to them. And then I can go and... Hmm, I think this would be enough room here for that one. And then we can just end it here. And so the reason that they need to get a different block And actually, I think now I could just move these pressure plates back to how I had them. If I, if I just move this one up. No. Is that stupid freaking... There we go. Okay, now I can move them. Pretty centered on here. Okay, now one more time, that up there, over here, okay, so this is how we'll do it, yeah, so we'll go through here, loop around, go through there, and they'll need a block to slide across the uh, thing, and let's, let's actually just make sure that this works, and that the player hitting the pressure plate after moving a block in. Well, that's not how I want that to happen. Well, the end point's going to be up here. Let's just move that one. Move the player over there, and hit play one more time. So I'm not sure if when I move the block across, it's going to trigger a... Yeah. So I do... I guess I do the gap there. So if I hit Z enough, it will... That. Now... If I hit play without throwing my stuff out, work. All right, end point, move up there. Uh, spawn point over here. Block, there you go. Let's test this little portion out, see how we got it. Okay, so we're just gonna go here. We're gonna spawn a block. We're gonna destroy it and we can go past now. Now, the reason for this might not be obvious because you could just go past and then push the destroyer block out here and just leave it alone, right? However, we want something at the end of these, or like at these areas, that we do not want destroyed. So like another block, for example. Something like that. However, if we do go through here, 
we're going to have an issue. So we need to put a gate here. So the player can't just go up or, or whatever. Um, and also a gate here. So they can't just go down, trigger the pressure plate, and then go back up. They have to go through the correct way. And we want to change the sprite on these. I almost forgot what I was doing for a second there. And I think also what we want to do is get some vertical gates here and there that we are going to have inactive at the start. They're going to be hiding. Before I do that, let me make sure I get their thing switched. Go there, and then we're going to do boop. We're going to grab this one, which I also forgot to change the thing of, and we go boop. All right. So, as we go through here, two gates will, you know, turn on and off, whatever. The player comes through here with this block, they destroy that. They obviously cannot move or destroy a block up or down from this point, because they are kind of stuck on a 2D plane here, and they won't be able to move it. They can only move it forward if they were to just use a destroyer block, right? So at the end of this, what we want to do is we need to have something there that is important. So we could have a movable block, like right there that is necessary to do a future puzzle. Like if you move it out and go around and stuff like that. Necessary. Same with here, we can put a block like that. Right there. And then... Let's do the last bit here first, so... Put a door here so we can move the end point up to there. And then let's grab this and that. And we're then going to just duplicate one of these lovely gates over to here. We're going to put a pressure plate up here, which is going to activate or deactivate that gate. Because um, you can't get a destroyer block around that corner. And if you try to put a destroyer blade or a destroyer uh, block and put it on a... I'm gonna have to put it up here, aren't I? Or else it just won't do anything, because you can't move that around corners. So this pressure plate, one object, this vertical thing here. We're gonna have a trigger once, since we, uh... No, we don't want to have to trigger once, we want to keep triggering, because if we just trigger once, the player could just move the destroyer block, destroy that, step on that, it would trigger and they could just leave. We need to have them actually stay on it. So that's how it's going to be. And if they destroy it, the gate's still going to stay closed. So they cannot do that. Um, similarly, I think if we have a pressure plate up here, and what this one does is multiple objects and this one is going to be all of these gates all four of them one two three four and it's going to change them on and off just like that so what that'll do is the player has to push that block out and then push it up and over onto that one or they can trigger with themselves and just kind of see what happens. Um, so that's what that block will do. We can then just take a destroyer block here, like that, so that way the block is permanently kind of trapped in that room, and there's only one way to use it there. There, what we can do is if we add some, like, we want to add some stuff here to prevent the player from just, you know, moving it out. And, oh, wait, they can't move the block up. Shiny. Wow. 
how to do this. I guess we could use a conveyor belt to just kick it away from the wall. So I think I need 90. And we'll go up. We'll just do it at a rate of one. We don't need to do anything special here. And so if we put this like right there, we'll move that. The block will go up one so they can then move it and do stuff with it. What do we want them to do after that? Let's actually make it go like further over here. Um, I guess at that point, we could put an inverse block, or not inverse block, an immovable block there, but they're forced to go to the left. But I could then put one here as well, so they have to go over there, up there. I could put another one, like, right here, so that they can't just push it against the wall. They would have to go around in and push it over to here. And then I can just put one of these here so they have to uh, push it up here and they have to kind of go around, push it over through here, go around, push it up there, and then they can leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then for this one, like I said, we also want them to switch that gate, which opens up that path and closes off the other path. And then they come down into this room. And they need to get at least one movable block. If they don't have this, they can't get rid of the destroyer block. So, we want them to take this block and move it here, obviously, and then they can go, boop, destroy the destroyer block, get through here, and they are golden. So, what do we want to do here? Let's, I guess, put this block over here for now, the furthest point away. And then I guess we could just do like a sliding puzzle to have them like move it so they can like move it over here. Then I have to move it up there. Then I have to go over here and move it over to here, which then we're going to put this here. They're going to go around and put it down, but then they're going to, no, I guess they can't put it against the wall. Let's do one more. Because then they can push it down here, then they can push it over to here. And that's going to be blocked, so they can push it up there. Can't do that, they would have to do it there. Okay. Like that. Yeah, they, uh, they can push this over, up, over, and down, over, up, around, over. Or they can push it just up, over. Down, over, up, over. Uh, regardless, it's a little slidey bit, right? That's simple enough. And then what we can do over to here, because we've already finished this side of the area. Player spawns up in this area. So we want them to get the original movable block we had here. And we're going to put it down there for right now. And why don't we, first of all, do this? Then we can put down a depositor here. That way we have to use a couple of blocks uh, first in order to do something. Why is that? What do you mean? You've been in front of the 
been in front of backgrounds before, have you not? Oh, apparently not up here, okay. Where else did I use a depositor at? Right there, okay. You and you, foreground one. Actually, I could have just gone here, clicked that, done that, and that would have also fixed it across the board on all of our map, but dumb. All right. <coughs> so yeah, the, the board was behind the, the wall, and I was in front of it, so we can properly see it. I think the text would still show up, it's just the rest of it was behind the wall, which is not what we want. Extra settings. Okay. Actually, I think the text we want to have be foreground to make sure it's above the uh, depositor sign background, just just to absolutely be sure that it's going how I think and want it to go. That's what we're doing. Okay. Next. So we have that there. We have all these here. I'm not sure how many blocks we're going to want to put in this thing quite yet. We do need to set the east spawn point there. Is that the only depositor I have in this map? Yes, it is. Okay. So. This means the player is going to have a number of blocks they can use. Let's start off by just kind of creating a maze of things for the player to go through. So they go up here, they can move it over to here then. They go over here, they can push that up there. that just to kind of make it difficult to get the block up here so they can't just push it like over they gotta go like up over they could go over further and they can go up they'd have to go further up because they have to get the block to that position that's what they need to do there i guess we could go and yeah we'll just do that for now um let's get like a couple other blocks one there one up here, and I think we'll just do that for the depositors. Two blocks there, I don't have to create too many more. All right. These blocks all need to go into there. So we could, if I put that there, it's going to prevent us from moving the blocks down at all. If I put it there, they'd have to push it down and over then down, then over, then down, then over to get that one in. This one they can push over, then up, and they can go up around here and push that one in. Yeah. I think that's what we can do. And for this one, they can just do boop, 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 right. I like that. I'm going to add a, a couple of pitfalls to places where the player might move things, but not necessarily. Just to kind of throw the player off and make them be like, uh... Okay, so now they can go boop, boop. Well, they're not going to be able to go that way because they, they can't get it through there then. They can go this one over there, up to there, 
over to there, down to there, down to there. This one they gotta go over, and then up, then over, down, then over. This one they go down, over. Hmm. They won't be able to do that because of that black hole there. Put the ball there. Move that one. Go. Okay. That's what we came up with. Because I could add another pitfall up to like here, just to mess with the player once again. Why are all these pitfalls here? This is bizarre. Okay, so let's do that and let's test this baby out. And then we can get stuff assigned and just let Okay, so. So we can then move the block however we need it. Here, triggers destroyer block, which we then destroy. Push this block over here onto the conveyor belt. It goes up. We push it up, over, up. We go all the way around. All the way around again. Up to there, that switches the gates toggle. We need to go like this, up to here, over to here. Oh, you actually could just go straight up from here. Couldn't check. I'll change that in just a second. That is that. And then we go boop, and then boop. And then mission complete in about a minute 30, give or take. So I think we're just going to grab a block void, put it here, so the player can't just go straight up with that. Go like up from here and over there, like I did. Cool. All right, minute 30. Not a great time, but it's going to have to do. Okay. Let's assign everything now. So first pitfalls. That's the first thing that came to mind. Next, pressure plates. Next, we need to do the depositor. Um, next. Gates. Ages of movement blocks, depositor. Okay. So now comes a question. If the player decides to get aggro with the destroyer blocks and they kind of just try to brute force things by spawning a destroyer block, they can only push it this way, which means these four um, immovable blocks would need to potentially have that one, that one, that one, that one. These would need to potentially be into the immovable block thing here. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think the destroyer block, do I have it here? Yes, I do. So when it comes to not movable blocks, it just sets them to inactive, perfect. so it doesn't actually destroy them. That's fine, we don't have to make spawn points for those. It can also travel across conveyor belts. Um, can't get past the block void. Over on this side, it would just destroy that, which doesn't matter. Okay. But the player could also trigger that and go back through there, which means they could destroy the rest of the removal blocks. Okay. You know what? I'll just grab all the immovable blocks then. Okay. But nothing else past here matters because everything else is going to get set up. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six movable blocks. Copy that down there. 
and then we need to make their spawn points. So block spawn one, two, three, four, five, six. Grab all those, move them into there. Got to set up their things here. One up here. One up here. Up here, and the last one goes down to here. There we go. All right. That is all those set up. So let's make sure that the end game is right there. Perfect. Okay. So for the dialogue, I think we can say seems the promise of freedom has given you some motivation. Only three more puzzles. Experiments. Left. Do try your best. I'm still collecting data here. For those, perfect. Uh, levels three, seven. Completed. Hell yeah. Um, then delete the prefab, open up 3.6, and cut, put that one over there to 3.7. Excellent. Okay. Next, 3.8. Okay. There's default parent. Put a prefab. So, what are the next things? So, a map where you destroy one side of a portal to pass by the other side or push a block against that portal. Okay. So, if we grab a portal and we just look at it or with our eyes here, uh, we know that the capsule collider for the portal is a, um, a solid block, right? You can't you know, push something through it. It is a physical thing, right? Which means it uses on collision, yada, yada, yada. So what happens, let me show you the logic behind this, is if we get a destroyer block, and if we get a normal block, let me move our spawn point up to here so I can show you. Normally, what happens when you push a block through one of these is it will teleport. However, if we were to destroy one, and then take this, move it up to here, we can actually push it against the portal because the portal no longer works. It's just a empty portal, right? So, what we need to do Is in this room, I'm going to make portal A go down here. Portal B, I think I'll put like here, up here perhaps. Get one over. There we go. Okay. So portal B's teleport location, we're going to want this one to go down here. Portal A's teleport location. Let's have it go down here. Okay. And so, we're going to grab our lovely green room. Thank you. And for now, let's just do this. And let's say, um, <laughs> that this area was covered here, and that we have something like this for right now. We'll, we'll redesign this in a second. So the, the thing we need to do is get a block to go past here, which I guess in that, in that case we need to remove that um, in order to do this, yeah? And then we can get a block void up here. 
that you have to push a block up this way. However, the blocks are smaller, so if I move this down a little bit... Is that enough to trigger? I know that would trigger the spawn, but if we were to disable portal A, for example... Let's try this and see what happens. So I want the player to have to push the block literally up against the portal in order to get it past that point. If you can't push it past, there's no point in doing that. So, yeah, not far enough. So what if we move the portal with the unlock back right here, drag it up to, like, that. Still cannot go back. 2.69. Okay. That'll work. 2.69. There we go. Alright, so with this, the portal has been moved. Portal B's location has also shifted there, so let me click that. Okay. And portal A also needs to have its location. First of all, let's turn that back on. Portal A's location needs to be adjusted down to here, I think. Just to be safe. So, because of the adjustment of the portal's location, in order to get it past here, we can't just push it up and then go through. The block will teleport over to here. Right? That's just how things is, right? Okay. Which means you have to destroy this portal with a destroyer block. So let's go ahead and let's let's finish making this level a little bit here. Um, that, that, and that, and then we'll do this. And let's grab that there. There's your pose. Let's just slam this all the way down to here. There. Okay. Alright, so that's the level scale scoop so far. Okay. I mean, one way or another, uh, you're going to have to destroy a portal, right? It doesn't matter if you destroy the one in the bottom left or the one in the upper right, um, but you're going to have to destroy a portal. Um, the player can destroy either one they want. It doesn't matter to me as long as they destroy a portal. Okay. One second, one of my fingernails was annoying me, so I'm cutting it off real quick. A whole finger! It's got to go. Okay. Alright, excellent. So, um... What we can do now is... I guess we can kind of make a little bit longer of like a tunnel here. Kind of make the player actually have to work for it a little bit, you know? Push up there and then... Well, they can't do that. They have to have one block open down there, don't they? Yeah. So that and then erase that one. There we go. Now they can push the block there and they go... Easy peasy. All right. Now... With that in mind, how do we want to lay these out in a way that gives us the most fun? I'm going to spawn the player there, and let's see. What can I do to make the player have to work? I guess let's get the destroyer block and put it here. And then we can make the wall go over here a little bit further and add like this. I can put a gate here. Yes, over here. 
they can push the destroyed block further in, but that's not going to help them at all. They're going to have to go through here and do something. So... Yeah, because if they push this block here, even if they do get it through the portal, it's going to end up here, not here. So that would be perfect. All right. So we need something to open up that location. Uh, we could use a pressure plate or a lever or something like that that we need to do with uh, things. I could just put this here and have it affecting the gate, like that. That way when you put the, put the movable block there, it's going to open that gate for the destroyer block and allow you to kind of destroy stuff, uh, essentially, right? So, we also need to do some stuff around here. Okay. I was thinking, if I put a pressure plate in here that respawns the destroyer block, hide the destroyer block, put another gate there that that pressure plate opens both, and then also have a pressure plate up here that makes blocks, then over here require the blocks and the pressure plates you have to go through and move around all the time. That sounds like a good waste of time. Let's do it. Destroyer block, you're out of here. Okay. We'll do that and then we'll grab our prefab pressure plate. Doesn't really matter where I put the, the spawn point for it at, but we'll go ahead and just make it go over here. Well, obviously, one of the plays you can make right away is uh, hitting this pressure plate, getting a destroyer block out here, put it in here, get another one to spawn, get out to there, remove that block to destroy those two gates, so you never have to deal with this pressure plate again. That would be one play you could make, and honestly, it would be the best play you could do. Because that way... You don't have to worry about the uh, pressure plate having a block on it whenever you need to use it, right? So let's test out one thing. I want to see what happens when we push this block through the portal and try to go after it. Okay, it does put us there. I mean, I guess I could have spawned this and it would destroy the, uh, okay. But no, I, I forgot. I needed to add a multiple things to this. There we go. Done. Okay, so this works as intended so far. Then we can add a pressure plate here. And we'll just have this one spawn in our normal blocks. One object. I'm going to get rid of our movable block and actually have this thing's spawn area right there. So you can go across here, spawn in a block, and they can manipulate it however they want to down here. But let's not make it too easy for the player. Let's add some hazards. So first of all, we have to make sure that they can get the block down to um, this location first and foremost. 
Well, the Pokemon Here's Load player can just destroy that with a destroyer block. I think I do this. The last one lock here. I push it down, over, down, over, down. I can't do that pressure. Just this one's here. I have another thing so we can move it that way. But I guess like, even if we do do this, they, they could just fill stuff up with blocks, right? But yeah, let's just. Let's just keep adding some of these guys. Why not? Why not make the player use up so much time by filling a bunch of holes? That'll be fun. I can put it like literally right where the portal lets out at. That'd be the dirtiest move. Right there. Yeah. We'll do that. The player can choose to like move the block around or they can just keep spawning them in and messing with that stuff. So cool. Alright. However, they are going to need at least one block over here. If not multiple blocks. Including destroyer blocks. Ooh. So what they will want to do here is, I think we could take a we could get a couple of portals and make them get a destroyer block through to here. Uh, so let's grab portal A, put it here. Portal B, put it here. And then Portal B's location goes out to here. Portal A's location goes out to here. Essentially, they're just going to juggle you back and forth through here. There is no uh, way to get past them without a destroyer block. So we can grab this, drag this all the way over to here. We get through here after getting past that portal, and then they have to get through the rest of it too. The worst thing about this is they have to put a block up here, go all the way around, and then push it through here. And they have to do that multiple times. You know, what we could do to be nice is to get a pitfall right here that they can just go into, and that they don't have to, you know, go back and forth all the time, right? But that would make the players, like, easier. We want to make this harder because the, the slime's going to earn their freedom in 310, right? So we have to, uh, have to keep going, right? Okay, so the player destroys this portal. They can't move the destroyer block any further up unless they like hit it at an angle and send it to both of them. Uh, at that point, they can move a block here to allow them to push stuff down once again. Okay, so. From this point, sorry, I'm messing around with one of those uh, grip strengthener things. Um, so from this point, I think we're going to decide that our exit is here, first of all. Go ahead and do that. And the spawn point's right there. Let's, let's just move it in the corner. That way it's a little bit further away from everything. Okay, so I think having a having sort of like a, a sliding puzzle here but it's not necessarily a sliding puzzle it is a you need to get a block through like something without hitting it with ice because if you hit it onto the ice it's going to be going into a block void which is gonna be fun. So let's put a pressure plate down here. And what's these off? Don't need those anymore. Uh, the pressure plate, it's gonna manipulate gate, 
which is going to basically just be, if we grab a vertical gate, it's going to be a gate right here. I'm going to let them out of this little room area, right? Okay. This pressure plate next to this one. Yay. All right, so I'm going to figure out where I'm going to put a wall here in a moment. Um, we are going to put this here and add another gate as well. So we're going to do that. Okay. So from this point, the player is going to try to get a block down here somewhere. Let's get a patch of ice right here and then a block void here. This ice is going to be the end, right? And if we take these two things, I can just basically copy them and kind of do this sort of thing. So that uh, if the player is trying to transport a uh, destroyer block, they're going to have a bad time. But let, let's, let's undo that real quick. Um, it might be nice to do something like this. I don't have really enough room here, I think. What if I move these two over here a little bit? If I can move these two further over here. These two I can move down to... Oh, there doesn't work. Ah. Ah. Middle two. Uh, I can do something like this. Then this one. Do something like this. You know what? I might just do this all along the... No, because if I do that, then I wouldn't be able to do a last, like one in the middle, to make the player have to move around. So we can do that, but then we put this one here, so that the player has to move it over here. They have to uh, then slide across the ice into a wall, go over here, push it up, go around, push it over again, and then... Over here's one more that I have to kind of go down and around. Um, but, fuck, they can't move the block away from the wall at that point. And that is the problem, isn't it? Mm, shoot. I guess I could get a conveyor belt and have this go negative 90 for down. And then for the last bit, grab another one of these over to here. Okay, so with that, we can go back to our tile palette, and I'm going to go ahead and just make a straight line across there. Easy enough. And then back to here. So this is fairly easy, right? Um, if you have just a normal movable block, you push it, push it down, push it over, push it up over, it gets kicked away from the wall, so you can push it down onto the pressure plate, right? But we need to do something that requires a destroyer block to come through here. So I think what we could do is just put a immobile block right there that you have to destroy, because if you don't destroy it, then you would have to um, go into a void or hit an ice, which then goes into a void. So it's just not happy. Also, I just want to point out how fucked up this little thing here is. Because 
If you touch this ice while going this way, it's going into the hole, into the into the void, right? If you like are trying to finagle it going like down, you're trying to nudge it down, it's gonna go into the wall, which means you have to go into a block void because you're screwed. Um, just great times all around, right? All around. Also, put another block void up here too. That way if you hit hit from the left, going left or going up, it's gonna hit that and uh, destroy your block. Good stuff. Okay. So they've come through here, they've got this pressure plate triggered. Um Actually, why? Why is it like that? I need to adjust this a little bit. I need to move this one over to here. To open up my tile palette. Put that there. This one here. And move that. Because if you put a block against the pressure plate, you're not going to be able to go down it. So, yeah, that would not have worked out. Because we needed this gate to open up that one. And... We don't want it to trigger just once for us the player to just go through and tap it. Right. Okay. And you know what? Let's go ahead and do this as well. Oh no, I don't have a uh, two cornered piece. Well, that's how that one's going to go now, I guess. Okay. So. What do we do for this last little area? Well, we have a gate, which means we need another destroyer block. Which means... The player's going to have to get another destroyer block right there, push it down to here, and then use it. Um... Well, that leaves a lot of dead space here, don't it? Unless I fuck with the player. <laughs> so I could get conveyor belts here. And direction going to the right. Say at a speed of 3, so the player can't just kind of brute force past it. Placed... Move, paste, move, paste, move, paste, move. Didn't hit control B, my bad. B, B, there we go, and then we can drop it down. Down a negative 90. Boop. So that should deposit it right there for us. Now we can move it. Uh, a different way now. And so, now that it's here, we can put a block void here. I am curious to see whether or not it would slide off the conveyor belt and into that. <clears throat> that might be a little bit too dirty, but uh, yeah, the player will have to push the destroyer block over here, down over to here down over here, and then, uh... Gotta be screwed again. That. I guess we can put some ice that says his end can move left. And then we can just copy this. And move left and right. Oops. How did I hit control C but not copy or paste it? Something like that. Which would then get the destroyer block over to here. And then we can just leave the player alone and have them do their thing. Yeah. Or we can put another portal here. Oh my god. Wouldn't it be awful 
if I put a portal here that led all the way over to here. Like, if this pressure plate activates a portal that puts a portal here and here, and then it, uh, just kind of messes with you. Oh my god. That'd be hilarious. And then you go through, push the destroyer block into that portal. It just ruins your life. Oh my god. No, that'd be stupid. What am I thinking? I think this might be enough torture. Um, let's see how it plays. Before we do anything, I'm going to move this block to this hole. Plug that one up. And I'm just going to work on plugging holes for a little bit. You don't have to worry too much about the uh, top ones over there. Just to make it easier to get other stuff into here. Let's do that. already passed and we're not yet out of the uh, first room. Love to see it. Okay. Grab another one of these. Time by doing what I suggested earlier and putting these where the gates would spawn. There we go. And if we just go off of these, it's going to do that. I don't know why I pushed that block all the way up there. I can't use it. Oh! Didn't see that one coming. That's great, though. Oh my god. That is so good. I love it. Okay. I can't reset the level. I don't know why I tried. Oh, that's great. Okay. So we know that up until that point, the game works. Perfect. God, it's so dirty. Oh my god. And to think, this one level started with the concept of destroying portals. Also, if you go through this portal now, you just end up back in spawn. For those of you curious. Here, 
I'm gonna try to destroy the button with this. Which will do that. Nice. And I'm gonna destroy the blue portal. That way I have a little more room to move things around. Like that. I'm gonna need another destroyer block, so I'm gonna get that one ready there. Okay, that one's gone. Let's get the next one loaded. Two minutes have passed, not bad. This is a good time-wasting level. portal with our explosive here. Boom. That gets destroyed. Now we need to get a normal block to hit that pressure plate. Making the player backtrack is definitely one of the best ways to make the time go higher. And I gotta say, I love it. Oh, gotta be very careful with that one or else it could just go in the block void. Damn. Alright, get that one. Let's make sure that the thing is against the wall there. Now, I suppose you could just go and get a destroyer block and destroy the pressure plate in order to do that. But now, the moment of truth. When I get this block all the way over there, is it going to have momentum coming off the conveyor belt or is it going to stop? Can I even get it all the way over there? My first try. I do some very careful nudges. I think that's good. And I can just go boop, boop, boop. There we go. No, oh, you son of a bitch. I forgot I have to actually like push it hard into the conveyor belt, so it's got to do that. It's a good thing I chose to uh, have that conveyor belt have one strength and not like 80 strength. Okay. Also, if you make a mistake at the last bit there and you push this block into the pressure plate or the um, block on the pressure plate down there, you're going to have to either start completely over or at least push a block back again. Okay, so this time we're gonna go... Oh, son of a... It becomes really hard to push uh, once you're there. I might have to destroy this one uh, block right here. Maybe I can move it down here instead to give it a little more time. So let's, uh, let's just spawn a destroyer block here for us. And then we'll just continue the level. You gotta go from up here. Push it down. Oh my god, it just completely says no to any sort of movement. Maybe I need to have a... Okay. Okay, I got it. So first of all... Let's get our block void moved down here. There we go. That should give you some more time to move the destroyer block. Uh, now for this problem, um, we probably want to have a block of ice here. That way we can push the destroyer block across the block of ice. And then we just need to have a 
another uh, conveyor belt here that goes up. Uh, and that one is 90 degrees, right? Okay. Another conveyor belt going, going three, right? That. Excellent. So now I'm just going to hit play. And I'm just going to test that a little bit out. We know it takes like over five or six minutes, potentially. So that's good. Rough. Hey, uh, Unity, what, uh, what are you doing? That was weird. Okay. Got our slime. Dragon through here. I'm going to select this gate and just turn it off so I don't have to deal with that. We're going to grab our destroyer block and put it here. I'm going to push it down. It hit the side of the uh, ice there. Okay. Or side of the uh, conveyor belt. So let's delete that. Let's delete that one. Let's grab this one and move it over one. Grab this one. Copy it there. Now I think I can... Okay, how about we uh, take this destroyer block and delete it. As soon as the destroyer block hits ice, it gets screwed up. Okay. So, no ice with destroyer blocks. Got it. We can do this at least, and then move this one over, move this one down. That way you can suffer at least a little bit. Okay. I think that'll do it. Um, I really just do want to see what happens when you put a destroyer belt or destroyer block on this. So let's hit play. And then this gate here. Here, we're gonna disable, grab our slime, we'll carry him over here. Ooh, it goes right in. I didn't expect that. So what happens now, if I make another destroyer block, And if we, like, quickly follow it and push it... Oh, no! Okay, that's just screwed. That's just, that's just, that's just horrible. Okay. So this last block void, I think we'll get rid of. Right down here. Let's try this, then. I just need to make sure that it's not going to go up against... Well, I guess if it goes up against the wall, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine then. Never mind. There. We're just wasting more a little more time. Going. I don't think I'm doing. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll fill out this uh, stuff here. So, pitfalls. We have a lot of them. Add those into there. Next, we have pressure plates that all need to be reset. Next, we have portals. Uh, then we have gates. Got a few of them here. Uh, we don't. Do we have immovable blocks? We have one immovable blocks. So we need to move that one in here. We don't have any depositors, uh, no cages, no attack towers, no levers. All that's left is, oh, nothing, because we don't have any blocks that are uh, here that will be destroyed otherwise. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Easy peasy. Um, as for the text in this level,
Let's see, so two more experiments to go. This one might be a bit of a challenge, though. Are you determined enough to get your freedom to solve this? Let's see what you can do. That's what we'll do for that one. Drag that one over there. Open up 3-7. Drag that one into there. Save it. Easy peasy. All right, next we have 3-9. However, before we start this one, let's all get up, stretch, go to the bathroom, do our thang thang. I'm going to... Get some crackers, I guess. A little bit peckish. And then we'll be right back to do a little more.
Alrighty. I'm back. Just in time for the next song, too, I guess, huh? Ugh. I also ran out of my uh, raspberry lemonade, so I went ahead and got some water. This one for 12, I was going to have <coughs> pushing destroyer blocks onto ice slash conveyors, move them around the map to destroy gates, blocking the player. But we kind of found out that the ice doesn't necessarily work well with the destroyer blocks. So let's test out why that happened. Ah. Okay. Try to move that away. Oh. Oh. So, the destroyer block always wants to move right. Why? Oh. How interesting. I'd rather block. Works fine. And the only difference is the destroyer block has mass and linear drag. Let's take a quick test of the movable block and just sort of see what happens. That one? Because we want the right, I forgot. Hey, end level script, can you move out of the way? Okay, try that again. So it goes across just fine. It goes back across just fine. I think I might have just been me hitting it as I was moving, but it goes down just fine. up just fine. But what happens if, say, I were to add linear drag to this? Ha. Huh. It still works? Is it the mass of the... Wait. Why does this have a sliding velocity of 2? Hey, destroyer block, what the fuck did I do? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> that explains a lot. Why did I have it equal to ice script? We want to set the movement velocity. Going into here. I 
How do I do this? Why? So, I don't even remember what my own code did that I made like yesterday. I have problems. So, we're getting the velocity of the game object. We're setting the y velocity equal to zero because it's moving left or right. We're then setting the rigid body velocity equal to the velocity, which should change the velocity. However, If it's a destroyer block, we're setting the sliding velocity equal to that as well. Well, now that I removed the two from the uh, equation here, the sliding velocity should now be zero. Um, let's test and see what happens. Once again, we're gonna start it up at the top. Well, it uh, certainly doesn't want to move. It is set to is sliding. However, the velocity just stops. Rigid body. Um, where's the velocity here? Ah, see it. Can I see your velocity? No. saw the sliding velocity change for like a second. Was I blind? How odd. If I if not in debug mode, I can see some stuff about the velocity and whatnot, I guess. Okay. So looking at it right now, it's no velocity. Push it down, its velocity is Y something, but then it hits the ice and the velocity goes to zero. Why? Do I need change I think what's happening is when is sliding triggers going into here and it's checking if is sliding is true, it's setting equal to sliding velocity, which is um, zero, zero. And then by the time the ice script takes the velocity and adds it here, the destroyer block is already at zero, zero. So we're gonna copy this. 
and I'm going to paste it down here. And instead of collision, yada, 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 we're just going to do G dot destroyer block dot is sliding equals true like that. And now if I do this in, in theory, since we're sliding, assigning the velocity prior to sliding, it should work. The destroyer block is a weird beast sometimes. Oh. So it slid within it stopped before it even got off the uh, thing here. Interesting. Wait, don't I have to actually set the directions? Oh, shit. <clears throat> That's the problem then, okay. So, regardless of what's happening, the destroyer block is not getting assigned this go if, if since I don't have can move right checked or any of the can moves checked um, it's only hitting this which means is sliding is never getting true which means sliding velocity is never updating which means the uh, ice block just sort of stops since I'm not pushing it once I hit the sliding thing so We basically need to check up here for this. And do this. We're gonna have to do that. Okay. Now we always check first if it's a destroyer block, and then if it is, we do basically the same thing we were doing before. Um, you know, that's not gonna work because we have this, which uh, I guess here we can do if. Equals right or der equals left. We can do that. Else we can do val dot x equals zero. So we left right y value it's locked if it's up or down, the x value is locked, and that should It's always gonna be one of those four, right? Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Okay. So it's split all the way this time. But since we were not previously using these things. So now, can move down. Uh, is end is, I guess, still checked, but can move up, can move down. This one can only move up. Okay, so let's try this now and see how it works with multiple ice blocks. Slide it down. It is going and it stops. I think the issue 
is that the since it has a mass and a um, value of you know stuff, the destroyer block is slowly changing its value. So we want to check in here if g dot uh, we'll just search this. We need to do equals true. We should do equals false, actually. So if we are not sliding, we want to do this. Otherwise, we don't care. Okay. That's what we'll do for that, and that, I think, should take care of that problem. We shall see. Hard to say for certain until we test it. So now if we push this down, the velocity should be locked. Is it because of the linear drag? Let's just check. Let's set that equal to zero. The answer is yes, it is because of the linear drag. Okay. Okay, so I suppose what we can do is in the destroyer block, if sliding is true, we can do rigid body 2D dot uh, drag. Is this the linear drag? There was angular drag, but I think that's a different value, right? Yeah, so I guess it's just drag equals zero. Not equals, it's just equals zero. Um, I don't think I want to do it here, because that's the update that happens all the time. Doing the ice script, however, I can do this and then dot drag zero, and then when we leave the thing, we want to do db dot game object dot get component rigid uh, rigid body 2d dot drag equals four and I think that's correct so with that once we stop sliding drag should kick in again here so Let's give that a try. We'll keep our eyes on the destroyer block's rigid body here. So once we start sliding, linear drag is zero, but it's still stopped. Wait, what? It went back up, hold on. It changed for like a second, right? After the first one, it exits. It disables. Why? Direction. So we're going down, and then it's doing that. Can move down should be true, right? The first ice can move down is true. It's doing that, and then when it exits, stop on exit shouldn't be. Oh, because is end is. Okay, for them. 
You know, I've kind of forgotten how these work. Do I even need his end on any of these? No, it goes all the way down. Yeah, then I can't stop when I'm going up, huh? is not true, it should stop me, right? But it doesn't? Exit now is tag, is true. Do I need to add exit now equals false when we enter an object? I don't think exit now gets used anywhere else other than reset ice. Level reset. Do I actually have a thing to call reset ice? I do not. Oh my god. Or is it at the top? Hold on. Yeah. One of these left and rights work, but up and down is not. Stop on exit never triggers if I'm going up and down. Why? Stop on exit. Let's get control F, stop on exit. So it gets called in the movement velocity when we're checking if we can or cannot move to the right. Or left, or yada yada. And when we exit to D, if object direction And stop on exit gets set to fall in there. What the hell am I doing? 
Yeah, I thought we had the ice script fixed and working, but apparently not. Um, okay, so I can just minimize this, it doesn't matter. So get velocity, get direction, get block direction. None of this matters. It's just this, which the player being up and down. Is it another one of those frickin' oh, because the player's sprite is lower, the actual like entry point to it is being good. <laughs> Okay, debug.log direction. First of all, let's get this out of the way. Okay, so down, down, down. Perfect, work for uh, that guy. Down. Up. I'm just getting selected as down once. Why? So exit now is that. Why? Why is why is set movement velocity not happening for me? Because if is sliding is true. So the first time the player goes through, we want to check exit now. Equals true. Jesus Christ, okay. Let me try this again. So, we're moving. We get the velocity here. That's the first slide. The second time we go into an object, we are not hitting that. We're just saying exit now because we're already sliding. And then exit now, because we're not doing velocity, this doesn't matter. It's just going to check watch. We do get direction. And we do that, but... What? I'm so confused. Why? Exit now is true. And then we just get the direction. Direction returns a string. And we just have object direction. Should this be? Exit now. If exit now is true, on stay liar. Maybe that, right? So that's to make sure the player and the other blocks can move if they've been stuck in the thing and their rigid body is zero. So that doesn't matter, but do I. Feel as though I need to do velocity again. Rather than just the direction, we could do the velocity again, right? Makes sense, I think. 
the only thing that gets up and trigger the uh, thing, right? Down, down, down. Okay. Now here I go. Down, down, down. Okay. Up, up, up. Down, down, down. That was weird. Left, left. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay. I guess that was it. But well, whatever. We have the destroyer block working with what we wanted to do the whole time here. It's fine. Just uh, remove our debug. I'm just going to do that without showing it because I'm just deleting a line. Okay. So now our destroyer block should work out here, right? Okay. Now, um, I, I totally forgot to point this level again. <laughs> Sorry. Push the destroyer block into ice slash conveyors. We move it around the map and destroy gates that are blocking the layer. Okay. That's what it was. So. I guess what we want to do here is first of all, let's get rid of this destroyer block and removable block. We want to add a pressure plate here. Not necessarily here, but just for now. And we need to turn off the debug normal thing there. So it's going to do one object. We're going to spawn a destroyer block. Okay. And then next, I think what we will do is grab our pile collider. Let me get out of here. Okay. And then we're going to Create like an elbow room down here. Goes over to here. And this area. Filled with gates, essentially. Okay, and then let's get the uh, the exits going to go here. Not that one, this one, right there. Perfect. Okay. So we're just going to get a bunch of gates, fill this area up, and what we'll have to do is have um another wall like. Here. Deal with this at some point, but for right now, let's just move these things into position here and then this bomb point. Spawn him up here. With the pressure plate, we'll move you down. I think we can move you over here. Okay. So the key for this is we're going to need to move. Destroyer blocks. Into a room. So let's destroy that wall. And do that. And then... There we go. So we're going to be putting destroyer blocks in through this hole. Let's get a conveyor belt here. Right. Force of three, why not? Um, and let's just get the gates going. We're gonna have to start here because we want the destroyer block to be able to go like that. Okay. And then let's grab our wall. And I think every, like, two should give us enough room for now. Okay. 
and then we'll want to grab our tile palette and to create some holes in here. Like so. It does look a little weird since the gates aren't attached to anything, but uh, that is fine. In fact, what I could do, actually, yeah, let's do that. Let's cover these back up like this. And then we'll select the uh, foreground tile like this. I'm going to grab a ice block. I think if I get that right there, I can fit it underneath these. That way, it's kind of like hidden. I'll just kind of slide across. Destroy the gate okay perfect so now we just have to get things moving in this area in order to do things um pressure plate do you have a way to you have a way to ignore the player not a way to ignore destroyer blocks however but that's functionality we could add so open this baby up to Ignore the destroyers. Do that. We'll uh, check. Let's see if game object equals destroyer block. And we also want to check here if uh, ignore destroyers equals true. We just want to return. No, we don't want to return. We want to, um... <clears throat> right, that's what we want to do. If ignore destroyers does not equal true, we want to do this. And then... Hmm... else we want to do trigger okay so we need to create a new I'm just gonna do it up here since it's easier than scrolling over there a private void do trigger which is going to then do what we want the pressure plate to do, essentially. So the really the only thing that we're going to do is with that uh, we're going to take in a game object conveyor to nope 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 nope. Take that in here, and we're going to do uh, string flip to direction. All right. So first, we want to when a, a thing goes across here, we want to do. Uh, Conveyor to manipulate dot transform dot position Well first of all now we need to uh I'm gonna cut, cut that. So we wanna do switch flip to direction case set that there 
All right, so the cases are going to be, position is going to equal, um, no, it should be rotation. real quick. Paternian. Okay. Just an M. Uh, so Paternian dot identity. Um, I don't know about that. Euler rotation. It's in a vector three. I think that might be what I want. And then... 0, 0, 0, 90 uh, is obsolete. Use Euler dot instead. Okay. So like that is what it's saying? Okay. I just wanted to get that down there first of all. So let's go ahead and copy and paste, paste, paste. So, right, left, down. Okay. So, going to the right, it's going to be zero. We're going to the left, it's 180. Um, up is negative 90. And then positive is just normal 90. Stop it. Okay. Right, just making sure. With this conveyor belt, 90 is up. Okay, so we just need to swap those around. There we go. Okay. So, first thing we want to do is just switch the orientation uh, visibly of that. And then we need to do conveyor to manipulate dot get component conveyor belt script dot. And we need to open up the conveyor belt script to make a value public. So our direction string, we want to be um, public. With that, I can now edit this string here. And we want to do direction equals flip to direction. That way I don't have to keep typing the different things in here, right? Okay, and the force shouldn't change or anything. It's just gonna change the direction that it's going in. So that should take care of that. Um, I mean, that's only if that's the only thing we're going to do with it, but that's the only thing I plan to do with a destroyer block hitting a pressure plate. Okay. Now, if we hit this, let it load, we can choose to um, look on our pressure plate here. And now we should see uh, some different things here. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to just create a copy of this real quick. Move it over here. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to place the spawn point right here. That way the plane has to work a bit and move it up, right? OK. So this pressure plate, we're going to just go ahead and mark as ignore destroyers Move the destroyer block. We don't care about that. Flip the direction. We're not going to touch that yet. We're not going to touch anything else. I just wanted to have this created and ready. Okay. So let's grab our conveyor belt. And we're just going to go nine, negative 90 for down. There we go. And it's going to start by just going down, obviously. Okay. 
I did not change the text there. Cool. Okay. And so we're going to take this pressure plate. We're going to move it over here. It is set to ignore destroyers. However, it's going to manipulate pressure or conveyor belt number one here. So I need to select that and then do that. And we're going to change the direction to... Right, I used lowercase, right? Yeah, okay. Lowercase. So... No, it needs to be capital. So it matches up with the uh, conveyor belt directions. So we need to switch this to right, to left, to up, and to down. All right, there we go. Now it'll work. Cool. So we can then take our pressure plate that is currently above background, and we can make it be part of the default uh, setting there, which means it'll be hidden behind the conveyor belt so the player can't even see it. So it will not mess with the perception of the things happening, right? So we can just move this up here. Just a little bit further down, please. Set a little bit further down. You piece of shit. Eh, eh, eh. There we go. It's on its way. So that is then done that. Um, I did get an error. I got a pressure plate error for date on exit. Oh, probably because it's trying to do that because it's it doesn't have a default thing here for um, if or ignore destroyers equals true and uh, conveyor to manipulate does not equal null. We just run return like that. I think we also want to check if ignore destroyers equals true and collision dot game object dot tag equals destroyer block we then want to also just return um, that way um, if we just move a block across in the future uh, and we don't want the actual destroyer block to do anything um i mean actually i don't even need this part here i need to have the destroyer block just do nothing when it leaves yeah okay That'll take care of that. So as you can see, the conveyor belt is now pointed to the right. Let's just make sure that it actually um, does move it. Okay. It tried to move it. All right, so it will work. That's excellent. Okay. If you get it lined up correctly. That's one thing I didn't think about. If the player misaligns it, the destroyer block would just end up over here. But I guess you could just spawn another destroyer block uh, somewhere and then just push it into another one, right? Maybe I put a block void down here. Yeah, just, just in case. But just in case they get a uh, destroyer block here somewhere, they can just push it into this um, lovely block void and it will not matter. Okay, so that's the first one, right? Next, we have a, another one. Let's separate it by using ice. And I think we'll just do that. And let's, let's just use the conveyor belts we have here. That. Okay, so we can do that, and then I think what we might do is just like remove some of these and add ice just to have it be a little bit different, you know? Hmm. 
I'm gonna hide these real quick because I think I can. Now I think I can just click on these and then delete them without having to worry about accidentally destroying the GUI. Although what I could do do it like this <clears throat> this one and move right this one and move left don't know if it matters but we'll do that so what we'll do for our next pressure plate put it here the conveyor to change is going to be I don't know why I'm doing that one I can just Click there, there, this is number nine, there, number nine. Also gonna go to the right. So it'll come down through here, change this conveyor belt so it goes over that way, the slide across the ice, and then it's gonna continue going over to this conveyor belt, right? This one can move left, this one can also move right now, okay. That was the first one, bloop, second one, bloop, third one, bloop, 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 right? Next we get this pressure plate. I move it over to here. And this one is going to manipulate this pressure plate again. Plus number six. Boop. Right there. And then we want to put another block of ice right here for that one. We can slide across here, go down there, and hit that. Then we need another pressure plate here. Oops, not that, sorry. Another pressure plate over here, which will then switch out. How about this one? Number 12. Boop. All right, so 12 is going to switch. Then we'll need a piece of ice here. We'll take it down to here and then over to here. And then, no, 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 no. Maybe I should hide another block here. So that one's going to switch to go over to here. That one will switch to go over to here. And then I want this one to switch to go over to here so we can get that one. So let's put, let's put a, a bat, cancel. All right, put that one over here and it's going to manipulate this variable which is 18. Variable 18 goes here. Okay, and then it's gonna go boop 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 boop. We need an ice patch here. And then it's gonna go over to this one to kill that one. Okay, easy enough. We can then have a conveyor belt here here and that one I don't know why I keep dragging it from there this one will manipulate this one which is 11 I'm gonna minimize the box collider okay that one's gonna minimize that one over there so we're gonna need another ice block here so it goes loop over to here, and then that one's already going bloop, right? 
Now there's there's so much going on. It's just I should have worked backwards, I think. Anyway, we have a uh, one. So that's the pressure plate that is there. We need to go here. And that was manipulating pressure plate number eleven, which is here. We go over to here. And so I think. It'll come down through here. Where's the last pressure plate at? Right here. I think we'll manipulate two pressure plates here. It'll be 11 and whatever this one is, 16. Okay. There we go. Those two will turn, which means you need a block of ice here. So now we're in this area. So we're here. So once we hit this block, go ahead and add a pressure plate here. Here. And we'll manipulate this particular one, which is 23, to turn it to the right which will then add this, which because that one has an ice block there, we want to go and move right. And we want to select this one and go can move left or right. This one here, we want to have and move left. So it's going to slide down here and get to it there. Okay. And when it hits these, we're gonna add some more pressure plates here and here. And what we wanna do, which that one, is once this one triggers, I think we want to set it to have the pressure plate uh, right here, which is 33. It's going to go up. I was gonna set it going up that way. And we need to change this one, which is 31, to go to the left. And that way, we can put this here. So it's going to basically go whoop, 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 up, over, and then down to here. So we can grab two more pressure plates. I think we'll need them. Over to here. Put these and these. So once we get to here, we're looping around again. But... We will want to switch this one, which is 27. And this one, which is 32. We want to switch them to go to the right. So I go over here and add this here and add this here. And we'll go over to here and send it down to trigger the last gate. Oh my god. I think I've done it. Okay, so let's see how this works when we're actually playing it. Player? Is that was that one too high? Not even one too high. Or I'm getting a error? Oh, hold on. I forgot I disabled my canvases. That was kind of important to have. Okay. Try it again now. Let's get it down a little bit further. And go. So off it goes. It destroyed a thing there. I'm gonna go down here now. Destroy. If it's not centered, I forgot. Let's add a new thing to the conveyor belt called center block. Okay. What this is going to do on trigger, enter to B. Um, 
actually what we want to do here, I do believe, um, when we're changing the forces and stuff, and getting the direction and all that jazz. Fuck, I'm gonna have to do it for like everything. Uh, you know what? I'll just do it for the destroyer blocks because that's what we're doing with right now. So, if we're moving up, we want to take the uh, DB dot game object dot transform dot position and we want to set we're going up we want to make sure that the x dot value dot x equals uh this dot game object dot transform dot position dot x which we cannot do because oh, we're stupid so we need to go vector three new pos equals to copy this nonsense that we need to do new pos dot x equals this dot game object dot position dot x and then we need to take this move that and do new pos like that right there okay we're going to do the same thing for these here Can't have the same variable in a switch. You know, eat my ass. Okay. Left, left, and left. And instead of the x value for the left and right, we want to change the y value. And for this one, we want to do r, r, r. R, and that should should take care of that problem. Now once we move the blocks, we can center them. So let's take this one, we want to center the block. Uh, this one, we want to center the block. This one, we we'll want to center the block, make sure. The rest of them don't really matter because they're going to be going in a straight line for now. This one will want to center the block. This one, center the block. You know what? I'll just do it all. Screw it. All of you center the block, okay? Good job. All right, let's test this out, see if it works, see what happens, and kind of go from there. Now it's gonna snap on there and go straight down, not cause us any problems. Gonna be beautiful. It looks a little janky when uh, it happens like that, but it's better than having them veer off course and all that, right? It does look really cool. They have like the conveyor belts all switching and then like them just being weird. Did I do this correctly? Nope. That conveyor belt needs to be switched to up as well. I don't know why I didn't think about that, but... Hmm. So... Where are the pressure plates here? These two trigger those pressure plates, or those ones there and there. What if I just add a another pressure plate to these guys and so nine and I'm gonna move this one up here so it's together. Um, so that is conveyor belt 
33 and 31. 33, 31. I need to move 30. I need to move 33. I think the one that's on 33, which is this one, should move 31. And then this one. Should move 32. And then the last one here should move 33. I'm switching to the left. 31 needs to go left. Which one does 31? This one, so you need to go left. N needs to go up. There we go. So now, if we try this again, it should work. Let's test it out. Totally, I can just push them all the way like that. That's so much easier. I'll take that. Speedrun strats! Here comes the one that we had an issue with. There we go, they swapped. Check it. Nice, and then we can leave. And it takes a minute. Oof, that's not good. Let's add a little bit extra to this. So, let's add a new pressure plate as well. And this pressure plate is gonna go here. Here. And it is going to spawn a block here. And it's gonna spawn just a normal, normal block. There we go. Okay. And now when the player triggers that, they will see that there are pitfalls here. We're gonna go ahead and add a spawn point thing too. There we go. We're gonna just kind of interlock for every other one these things. I'm gonna just copy all these. I can just do this. Boom, right there. And we need two more here. Or I can make the last one be a depositor. Just really screw with the player. And this one's going to need two spawn points, spawn points, spawn points. Um, let's have to take three. Okay. Perfect. So let's try this now. Just to add a little something extra for the player to do. That way we don't have them just kind of doing same thing this Did one too many, but that's fine. Here's a little speedrun strat here. You can just line these guys up. Do a few at once. Rather than going all the way back and forth. So you need three, four, five more. Okay, so here's one. Two, three, four, the last one makes five. It's going to take a little bit to push them down there, but we'll see. 
the time we end up getting. But again, the player could just go back quicker, fall in the pitfalls. And then one, two, three, boom, boom. Level beat in about two minutes. Okay. Not bad. You know what? Five. That's fine. Shit. Yeah, okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and assign all the blocks and stuff now. So we don't have any blocks to assign, so pressure plate. We need to assign a lot of them. Let's do that. And then we need to assign pitfalls. There. We have a dispenser. Depositor. Whatever it is. And then gates. And I think that's everything that needs to have a thing assigned over in our level reset script because nothing else can be destroyed. Yeah. Another strat you could do with this is to spawn the first block, send it, and then just keep sending them until you have, well, I guess that wouldn't matter. I was gonna say you could keep just spawning the first one and having it go down here and then just destroy all the gates of the destroyer block, but that does not work because it does not do anything. So, oh no. Oh, I just thought of something that would make this so much better. If you have, the, if you have the pressure plates out here for the player to stand on when they are um, moving stuff around, so they have to like, Use the pressure plates, like navigate through it. Oh my god. Genius. You know what? I'm going to do that. So we're not done yet. We just have to move some stuff around is all. But other than that, it's it's fine. So let's undo that. Reset that there. I'm gonna move this pressure plate up to the upper right. Move this thing down here, just so we have more room to add other pressure plates and stuff like that. that. And then, I think, let's move the first pressure plate. This one's going to be easy enough. Um, no, we, we don't want that there, because that would, the timing issue, I don't think you'd be able to get down in time in order to do that. But our second conveyor belt, or our second pressure plate, whatever the hell it is, pressure plate two, this one you should be able to get to pretty easily. And then pressure plate three, which get that one, that one goes down here. Which this pressure plate triggers that to go over here, which would destroy that. Where the fuck is the pressure plate at? This one. Oh wait, what does this pressure plate do? You're we have about nine, which is that one. Okay, yeah. So it would trigger over here going down to this pressure plate, which then triggers pressure plate number six, or not pressure plate six, but um, conveyor belt six, is that one to go over here. Let's just check and see if this is possible for right now. We'll push that in there, it goes down. And then do this. Stand up, cup, drop. No. Okay. Once more. So we push this in. We go immediately down to this pressure plate. All right. These only trigger once now. I need to. Hmm. Wait. No, those were not supposed to trigger. Never mind. Never mind, this was going to be a thing, but I don't want to spend that much time working on it, so never mind.
Never mind. <laughs> if I were to do that, I would have to change all the coding to be like, oh, if it's a conveyor belt, allow the player to do this, but yeah. <laughs> Unfortunate. Maybe another time. Yeah, because it's... I was getting errors when I was stepping on the pressure plates as a player. Ugh, okay. All right, in here. So... Let's make this go here. Wow. Final level here before earning your freedom. What will you do once you're free? I wonder. Go around the forest, wandering, meet up with some friends. Slimes have friends. Well, listen to me rambling. I won't keep you. Get started. Okay. That's what we're going to have for all of that stuff. Let's go ahead and add this prefab number nine down to here. We then, of course, want to go into here, assign number nine there. Okay. And remove that from here. Excellent. Now we have level 10. Excellent. Perfect. We are going to set the items prefab to default. However, we need to add some new assets here. So give me just a moment. Drag them in. Uh... Yes. This. Okay. We're going to drag this tile set in that I previously used for my I'm just a slime game. Apply that. Open the editor. Slice it up by 32 by 32. Hit slice. Hit apply. However, for the trees, we have to do a little something different here. We have to delete all of these things and just change this to be a little bit bigger. There we go. That way we select the whole tree when we're trying to add them in here. We also don't need this. We don't need these guys here. We don't really need the pathing. Or the crystals, everything else uh, I'll take so we can also do I don't think I need water. There we go. Okay. I don't need the, the pine trees. The less stuff I have to work with the better. Alright, excellent. So now let's go to our tile palette. And let's add a new thing called we're just gonna call it forest. Fancy. We need to make sure that we save it into our tile maps. Save, and then drag it over to here. Make sure we save it in our tile maps once again. Okay. As you can see, it kind of lays out our, our things here. So, with this, what we will do is for our tile colliders, we're going to go ahead and just get rid of everything. So let's go ahead and select a nice big field. And I can just go bloop, 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 bloop with. Okay. Now, here comes the fun part. We're going to take our tree, and I think that's what we're going to do here. And we can just go ahead and paint it across here. And it'll add some nice tiles for us. But this is going to be a bit of a pain, you see do stuff like that. So we might have to add another collider somewhere. Or 
switch to something else. You know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll make our, uh, we'll make this be the like, side collider stuff. So the player can't get out. This. And then instead of uh, having the trees be a collision point, um, at least for the bottom areas, what we can do is we can grab the foreground, finally. We can add in some nice, bushy trees. Let me just check here, foreground. And this should be foreground one. That way I can put stuff above that. Okay, there we go. Kind of the time lap. We're going to go ahead and just add some trees here, some lovely little trees. I do need to change this to be bottom right, I think. No. Top left, there we go. That way it uh, allows us to have the tree trunks kind of hidden behind other tree trunks, you know? Oop, let's undo that. I think I'm gonna put these trees here now, they're gonna be yeah, up above there. So I'm gonna do that so we have trees there with uh, that. Okay, and then let's get uh, the background. We're going to go ahead and just make it be all of this. That way it's a nice green background here. We're going to add uh, just a bunch of random grass, stuff like that, some flowers, kind of randomly sprinkling them out here. And then uh, above the background, so we can you know, use this stuff, we'll add some you know, normal flowers. We'll add a, a tree trunk or two. Romance stop! Alexa, stop! Two. Have Alexa, trunk. stop! I don't, I don't know why she was like, oh, did someone say my name and ask about tree trunks? It's like, no. No one did. I'll add a little bit of this here. Can I fit that there without? Yeah, I can fit those next to the trees. Nice. Oh, these rocks. Let's add a couple of rocks. Nice, okay. And then we can add using this. It's not that. I want to grab a proper tree. Okay, and then let's on this tree object, we're going to add a Capsule Collider is going to be a horizontal one that we can go down here like this. And that way the, the base of the tree can't be ran into, but it can be gone behind. So we need to make this a foreground and we're going to make that one just to, you know, make it two. So it's above everything else. Okay. So here we have our lovely little tree. We don't need to make a prefab of it. We can just go and you know, place a couple of trees here and there. Go where we want to go. Kind of like that. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to get a prefab. Make a lever right there. Don't tell anyone about that lever, okay? You can just barely see it, right? Just sort of barely see it all right let's turn off the snap to grid so we can make it a little bit better um we can do that that'd be fine we can hide it like right there look off that yeah you can kind of see it there <clears throat> so is the slime intelligent enough to see a lever right there And then let's um, let's just go to the foreground here. I'm gonna remove some of this, and we're going to go back to our green room. We're gonna have an exit go here. Like this. Hope that's foreground, not collision. Let me 
erase that. Now we're on the collider tile map, perfect. Then if I go back to the forest, grab this tree, for example. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. But what we want to do is grab this tree here, paste a couple more in here. And we're going to use these last couple of trees here. Tile downward. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go like all the way down with them. Unfortunate. Just to hide the trunk so it's not too obvious. There we go. Okay. We've added a couple of trees here. So what will happen essentially is we're going to create an empty called fake trees. I'm just going to add all these trees that we added into them so they can easily be toggled on or off. That. Um, I'm going to call this in a movable block just because I don't want to have to add something extra just for this particular thing. So the lever is going to activate that. Always visible on start, just going to be one object. Since it is just one object, and it's going to just set it on or off. And maybe there. But we're not done yet. No. We need to go to our assets once again. And we need to go to our animations. Not that. What am I doing? Where are... Where are the slime animations hidden? Where did I put them? Right, right. Okay. Which one's the idol? Here it is. I'm going to grab this guy and put him at character level. And we're just going to go here. We're going to flip him to negative one, so he's kind of over like this. that okay and now have I made no okay we're gonna see sharp trip to say on trigger or I guess we say to interact but whatever it's fine let's go ahead and add these fake slimes uh, give them the say on trigger thing here and what we're going to do with this is I'm going to open up the auto talking thing as well so I can grab this information and then we want to do an update here we also want to do a auto talking AT and at the start we want to grab AT equals auto talking or not kick we need to do a game object dot find game object with tag level dot get component auto talking I think that's where the level uh, auto talking thing is that right just double checking. Yep. Okay. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and add the fake, uh, fake trees right to there. And the lever I'm going to add to here. That so we have that. And there's nothing else that's going to be in this level, so we don't have to worry about that at all. And we're going to take the end spawn 
toggle this back on, turn the fake trees off so I can actually see where the end level is at. Right there. One more in, there we go. Okay. Okay. And then to prevent the player from getting do that and like touching it before um, we want them to, we're going to add a couple more trees here. Actually, hold on, let me just undo all this real quick. I'm gonna set that over there. Delete that. Let me, let me just delete all these trees again. So we have this one fake tree. Let's just start fresh. Going one, two, and then one, two. So we just have less things in the in the scene. Okay. We'll copy another one. Paste it here. Sure that it gets off screen here. Okay. Now, if we were to hit play, our spawn, our player would spawn somewhere here. And yeah, as you can see that that up, isn't it? Um, how do I? Oh shit! I'm gonna have to do that, aren't I? Oh my god, that's gonna be awful. Okay. Um, okay, let's do this, and then tree one, it's going to be two, and then we got to go with three, and four, and five, and six, seven, and eight, and then nine like that. And with that, the trees will be mostly here. So if we do this, and now we hit play, everything should be properly in the correct, like, uh, stuff here. As you can see, we have our little guy here, and uh, this is sort of neat. Okay, so let's move the spawn point up to here. We'll have the spawn kind of out of the you open here. I just want to check to make sure if we go down to the end level area. Can I trigger? Doesn't seem like I can. Okay. Oops, I need to give those slimes colliders too, don't I? Let's see. So let's go box collider. And let's make the offset. Oh, one, it goes to the right, yeah. Um, negative one for the bat, and then if we go 0 0.5 for the Y, 0 0.25 for the Y. And then instead of one, we go 0 0.5 for this guy. Okay. Offset is zero or negative zero point nine. Okay. And then zero point two. Zero point one. Zero point nine one. Nine two. Nine three. Nine four. Nine four. There we go. Alright. So with these guys, I want the character to be there. I think if we look at the prefabs, our slime character is zero. So I want the player to be able to go behind these slimes that are not moving. As you can see, we can just kind of go behind them. Weird. Whatever. Okay. So now, in our thing here, when we have update, we want to check. Um, do I have the lever script open? I do not. 
Let's open up a letter script just so I can copy code and I don't have to type it out. So in here, want to do this, but we also want to do um, private bool is colliding. This false to begin with. Okay. Now first we want to check if and then is colliding equals true and at dot um or auto talking i know i brought it up here auto talking right there so we want to check to see right here if message dot count is that so let's change this from private to public and from this one private to public we don't want this to interrupt the person talking or do i do it at dot It dot talk counter equals the message dot count. So that means that this will not happen or allow this to happen until the person's done talking and yada yada yada. Right? Okay. Let's move this back over to here so I can do this. Alright, so now we need to do on trigger enter 2d we also need a on trigger exit 2d and we'll do if collision dot tag or dot game object dot tag equals player there we go we want to set is colliding equals to true and then down here is colliding equals to false okay and then if they hit f we want to say dialogue dot text equals message and we don't want to have a list of strings we just want to have a ring. This doesn't need to be private. Screw it. Okay. What? What, 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 do, what do you mean? Oh, I don't have at.message.count. Right. Blah. And then we're going to set text box dot set active true. Do that, and then we want to do a enumerator. So I e enumerator. Uh, wait to close. And we're going to do a yield or return yield. Remember how to do this? I will look it up. Um, which thing has a The numerator, there we are. There we go. After that, we're going to set text box dot set active equals false. Okay. But we probably want this to set open for like two seconds. And we want to do start coroutine, wait to close, like that. And that's all we have to do for this. Excellent. So, what we're going to do, set this aside here, open up these fake slimes. They need to be given a circle collider, and we're going to have the radius be like 0 
offset by negative uh, 0 0.9. That should be good enough, right, for it. So this is going to be in his trigger. And now, in all of these slimes things, we need to have the canvas box and stuff set up here. So we'll grab that and we'll grab that. And then on trigger, what we want to say is these slimes are not moving. They appear to be made of painted wood. Just like that. Okay. So that is what this level is going to be. So if we were to go to our level thing here now, we can say, congratulations, you've earned your freedom by beating my experiments. Why? Look over there. Some of your slime pals. Why don't you go go and say hello to them? I feel like I misspelled congratulations, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Anyway, so now if we hit play, the player will spawn in. They'll move, they'll see these slimes, they'll say, congratulations, you've earned your freedom. Look over there, some of your slime pals. Why don't you go say hello to them, right? And so this would be like, oh, maybe I should go press F on them. They will, and it says these slimes are not moving, they appear to be made of wood. So I think we need to change our coroutine to maybe be three seconds instead. Okay. And so the player will look around and they'll see probably this lever, flip it, and then they'll see the exit and exit the level. Is it a T? Son of a bitch. How dare it? How dare it have a T in it when it's congratulations, not congratulations. Son of a bitch. All right. I could just open up Google. Yeah. It should really be spelled with a D. 100%. 100%. Anyway, that's this level. And it'll take it, take the slime to the next level here. So, wonderful. Okay, very simple level. It's kind of just one of those, you know, messing with the player kind of things. Um, so I don't think we have to do anything else here. We can just have this level to our lovely thing down there. You see, uh, Jekyll Gamer, when I say congrats, I end it with a D2. So that doesn't help at all. I spell it C O N. G-R-A-D-S, or like grads, I say G-R-A-D-S. So that does not help to remember it for me. All right, so we have level 10 there. We can add our level 10 into this script here. And wham, bam, we are done with levels one through 30 now, hooray. Let's go ahead and add these to our game manager. Uh, we need to add six through 10. There we go. Excellent. Okay. And then we can hit save and we can unload that scene. Okay, perfect. So go to our prefabs here real quick. Let's open up our next level prefab. This is going to be level uh, four dash. Level name's gonna be four dash, and then level number is gonna be 31 to begin with, or 
31. That's right. Go ahead and unprefab this real quick. Okay. And so let's go ahead and just add our next color, which is going to be purple. Here again, select that folder. I need to grab this guy, bring it over here, select the folder again. Oh, sorry, socket and tile maps. Nice, love to see it. Okay, now let's just go ahead and, like previously, we will make our default layout. I don't know about this color though. A little bit hard on the eyes, I think. We'll see how it actually looks when we actually do something in it, but for now, there's our first level area. Nice. Okay. End level. Just bring our current level thing in there. Maybe level three something. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna leave that empty because I think last time I tried to do this, it was easier to just not have anything. Okay, so level specific prefabs. We're gonna drag this guy down to here. Plus level four dash whatever. Okay. Then I can go ahead and uh, think unpack this prefab. One, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Easy. Now we can go four dash one. 4 1 and level 31. Not all these bad boys. Um, I wonder if it does this in order. 32, 33, 34, 35. Six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, and forty. Oh. All right, that must just check. That's like it was correct. Perfect. Okay, now we just got to do the, uh, the main level descriptors. Okay, so 4-2, 4-2, 32, 4-3, oops, dash 3, 4-3, 33, 34, 4-4, 4-4, I already did that one right, yeah, okay, 4-5, 35, and five up here. And this one's going to be six. Okay. 37. Number seven. Oh, it's got six still. There we go. An eight. Eight. Oh, 38. Sorry, my bad. Okay, just making sure I did that for the same one. All right, and then 39, number nine, and then last but not least, 4 dash nine up there, and then 4 dash 10. And this one is going to be 40. All right, perfect. We have all those set up now. They're all ready to go. Let's go ahead and uh, tick those off. Perfect. Okay, we have those ready to go. Ugh. 
Okay, so I think I'll wrap up here for today since we're in a kind of good stopping place. We have our uh, our next little things finished. And if I open up my thing over here, we can get rid of that one. And we can get rid of this number, which I'm just now realizing that Alice doesn't have a number four. So that was great. I'll just leave that like that. I don't want to change the number of slots for these. So when we come back on Monday, we will have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll have six levels that we have a basic idea for. Now I might, after I wrap up here, consider some uh, some other levels to add onto this. Probably add them up here and stuff like that. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna move this one up to here, to be honest. All right. So yeah, once we come back, we'll continue building levels, all that good stuff. I might have that next block made, which is a pressure plate that's going to change a movable block into an inverted block or an inverted block into a movable block, which will uh, be very interesting when we uh, are able to do that. So I think that'll be fun. But yeah, uh, until next time, thanks for hanging out. If you missed any of the video and you want to watch more, all the VODs are on YouTube, and this one will be up there shortly as well. So... Bye-bye for now.